Hello, I am Jayanto Chatterjee. We are uh, discussing management of field sales. In today's session, in continuation of what I was discussing uh, in the last session, uh, in the last session we discussed about uh, the first two steps in the personal selling process. That is uh, uh, the identification of an opportunity as prospecting and uh, the process of taking the prospect forward. So creation of the prospect database and qualifying of the prospect database and uh, taking actionable points out of the uh, prospect database. These are the kinds of stuff that we discussed in the last session. Today, uh, I'm going to discuss that having got the input from the prospect database, uh, what do you do when you actually make a sales call? Uh, that's what we are discussing. So uh, we'll also therefore discuss uh, a little bit the preliminary part of the sales uh, presentation. That means the actual interaction with the prospective uh, customer. So the title is from prospecting to the prepared sales call. So here it a little bit uh, highlight is uh, that uh, the, the element of strat strategy, the element of looking at the bigger canvas, understanding the customer's uh, needs, uh, not from only the expressed uh, viewpoints, but also understand it in the context of customer's own success requirements. So the strategic needs of the customer and coming up with a creative solution and mutually beneficial agreement. We will uh, discuss this mutual benefit aspect a little bit more later on. If I put it in a uh, diagrammatic form, this is a diagrammatic model of the consultative uh, selling uh, based on the customer relationship approach. Um, so on the left hand side you have this customer strategic needs and uh, creative solution. These are the inputs and from there you lead to the mutual beneficial agreement, develop the long term relationship and the performance goals. These are the sales performance goals. So obviously you need to keep your costs down, improve your productivity, uh, increase your sales, increase your profits. These are your goals, uh, sales performance goals. But uh, don't put the goal first, but rather what I'm saying again and again is emphasize the process. If your process is virtuous, then the goals will be attained better. This is what is the crux of uh, today's session, which is the steps in planning the sale and executing the sale. So every call that you make out after the prospect database has given you an input and your sales dashboard is saying that this is the customer to call on today, then every case be clear about your sales objective. Uh, what is it that you are wanting to uh, achieve in this particular call? That means every call must have very crisply defined one, two or three objectives. Not a broad objective like I want to book the order, but an objective is that in today's uh, session, uh, today's interaction with the customer, what are the objections I'm going to uh, take care of? What are the problems that had been identified I'm going to address in the interaction? Obviously that will come from understanding of the customer profile. So determine sales call objectives by understanding the customer profile and uh, identifying the key benefits uh, the customer is looking for. Uh, this is also earlier we have discussed as the developing the strategic uh, value proposition. That should be the uh, foundation of your sales presentation. So again, summarizing what I just now said that always have a very clear cut sales call objective and uh, should be not too many and uh, there should be some focus uh, and flexibility. Both are important. That means you have some 
objectives of, of that sales call. Now, the customer may come up with a complete new set of requirement. So, you should not, you should be flexible enough and not get hung up or oh, no, these are the points I want to mention today and, and not pay enough attention to uh, customer's points. Obviously, you should be flexible to give priority to what the customer is talking about and that should guide your uh, interaction and the presentation. And uh, there is an acronym given here is that uh, set a SMART call objective. It's an acronym uh, because it basically talks about uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic time times. So, uh, it's uh, really common sense. Just put in an acronym format so that you remember that your uh, um, in, in the sales pre-approach, your sales call uh, must have some specific objectives. You should be able to measure at the end of the call to what extent your uh, objectives were met, uh, specific objectives were met and obviously you have to set such objectives which are achievable in that particular call depending on the position of the sales cycle uh, where you are and so on, realistic and etc. Uh, so this is the uh, objective setting. Then comes the customer profiling. Customer profiling is what actually the objective and the customer profile, the customer profile is like a filter. You may have, uh, you know, five objectives, but you can prioritize to maybe three uh, by uh, looking into again your customer profile. Customer profile is something that is uh, uh, refined after every call. So normally we keep a call uh, report. In the call report, your aim should be to get more and more and more pertinent information into your customer profile, uh, so that your that becomes uh, uh, you know better and uh, better shaped. Now, because if you do your customer profiling well, that means uh, not only the information, the demographic type of information about the customer, but also uh, detailed identification of the customer's needs, customer's problems, customer's current pains, uh, that will improve. Uh, this point we have discussed earlier that our whole aim is to uh, look at problem solving approach to field sales. Uh, develop the field sales personality as that of a consultant, uh, that of an expert uh, who the customer will trust to provide the most appropriate solution. So obviously, once you have that information, then you will be able to focus on what benefits, what problem solving opportunities you are going to bring to the table. And that will make your sales uh, presentation uh, much more effective and not blah, blah about, you know, our product can do this, our service can do this. So don't focus on the bells and whistles of your product or service or feature uh, only, uh, but rather use the uh, feature information to highlight the advantages and benefits for the customer. We call it FAB. I'll just talk about the FAB just now. But uh, at this uh, slide, I'm talking about a typical customer profile and planning uh, sheet uh, structure. So as you see here, the kind of information you will have will be uh, name, address, type of business, name of buyer. And now this you may have to, depending on the complexity and the volume, you may have to generate this sheet um, for every buyer in the decision making unit in case of a B2B. In case of a B2C for a consumer durable, like for a car or for a refrigerator or for uh, a, a high, big size uh, um, LED um, uh, TV, uh, you may actually have uh, one or two key buyer information here. And then people who will influence the buying decision. Uh, so it can be, you know, in case of a large TV, uh, the sale value may be few lakhs of rupees. And uh, it may actually have a, a big influence from the children of the family or from the older members of the family, uh, so senior citizens in the family who will spend more time with the TV. 
And then, of course, it should have some nitty gritty information like the buying hours and the best time to see the buyer, the receptionist's name and all that. You know, sometimes uh, a good relation with the receptionist in a large organization or the secretary of a uh, key decision maker can vastly improve uh, access and your relationship. So note, uh, and you can see here that you will not have all these information uh, which are now on this projection. Go through them and you will see that many of these will, you will have to collect over time uh, through a few calls, through a few meetings. And But you have to be active to know that I have uh, uh, these information and these information are uh, lacking. So I, you see here, uh, features, advantages and benefits. This is uh, the so-called FAB, very, very important in the uh, sales uh, process at this stage. That means your product features or your service features are less important in the presentation compared to what advantages and benefits they can offer to the uh, customer. So don't talk about the speed of machining, but talk about the time that can be saved in the customer's manufacturing process and uh, the higher yields uh, and lesser rejections or the optimization of the uh, product uh, customers product output so your product features need to be brought out you need to subtly position your product as a superior option compared to your competitors but don't take the tack of saying see my products can do these these things and these xyz other competitors they can't do these these things that approach is not a very good approach. A much better approach is that your current process can be improved. Your current uh, manufacturing can be aided uh, if we offer these kinds of uh, resolutions. So of, you are offering advantages and benefits. And then you are pointing out that these advantages and benefits can be very gainfully obtained from the features of our products, this feature, this feature, this feature. So the feature listing should come later after pointing out the advantages and benefits which are primary for the customer's need. And uh, then accordingly, you will be able to uh, make your presentation superior. Because your uh, purpose is on the left hand side, the first two uh, blocks to get attention and create interest. To get attention and create interest, just like in a person-to-person uh, -person interaction, even in a social relationship, you can get attention and interest much better if you focus on the other person rather than on yourself. You can uh, very seldom get interest if you brag about yourself and you are not listening carefully and you are not highlighting uh, that uh, the situation in terms of the uh, recipient's uh, profile. So for attention and interest, better attention and interest getting, uh, you have to understand that uh, show you are there to help. Uh, the, this approach is very, very important that your goal is to determine the need problem of the customer and accordingly highlight the solution that you can offer because that will actually interest. So attention getting is by focusing on customer's problems, not in a very uh, gross manner, but in a subtle manner, uh, not in an offensive manner, but in a more uh, consultant manner. Uh, point out the 
problems and that will allow you to go to the next step of generating interest because then you can actually offer the features and benefits that you have. So problem uh, discussion, problem identification, problem discussion leading to features and benefits that will fulfill a need, solve a problem and that will actually then lead to the next stage which is the customer desire to acquire uh, your product or your solution. Uh, the conviction and the purchase are the final stages obviously. Uh, but as you are going through this desire phase, be very careful about uh, the non-verbal uh, signals. Uh, like if you if the, if the non-verbal signals are showing the customer's body language is showing interest, intent, the customer is looking at you and not, uh, you know, looking away, not yawning, uh, not calling for the other person, not uh, getting uh, busy with uh, on the cell phone. If you have the attention and if the if you are continuing to engage and this uh, every salesperson can feel that uh, I have the customer's attention and I'm going to and, and, and you are getting more and more reception then you have a go signal then you have a green signal so you should be able to identify also uh, therefore the green and the yellow and the red so if it is red that means this is not the right time to babble uh, this is not the right time to keep on talking try to switch Try to get back to the uh, interest level. Then only you can go to the next step of uh, conviction and purchase. Uh, at this conviction stage, uh, obviously you are still you have to still strongly uh, project that you are there to help, and uh, you are also at this stage you should be able to bring out that how the features, advantages, and benefits of your product will solve the needs and the problems. And uh, this is a stage where often a trial close, that means almost a commitment uh, can be obtained. Not always, but many times, a, at least a tentative commitment uh, can be obtained. And this is what we call strike the iron when it is hot. That means never give up the opportunity of trying to close when you have the customer's uh, desire and uh, almost possible intent to get convinced by your features, advantages uh, uh, or rather advantages and benefits offered by your features. So at that stage, you might like to chill and say, so should we go ahead and uh, then, uh, you know, sign an agreement or uh, close this deal? And uh, that, in short, uh, is, a, is a concluding part to the, the first four steps of the selling process uh, or the fir first five steps. And the recap of the face-to-face -face selling process or personal selling process or field sales process is uh, summarized here in three bullets. Get the prospect's attention and interest by focusing on the need and the problem of the customer and then uncovering and answering the prospect's questions and revealing how your features uh, can offer advantages and benefits will result in uh, interest converted into a desire and a desire is transformed into conviction uh, is again through a uh, process which has to be very tenderly handled. And uh, perhaps if we, uh, you, if you go back to an earlier discussion about the buyer behavior and buyer psychology, then you will get some more inputs for this part that how do you actually convert a, a desire into a conviction and final purchase. Uh, if possible, I will have some more discussion 
uh, on this uh, at a later stage uh, when we are discussing about the uh, nitty gritties of the sales presentation. Uh, but as you can see here, we have now created a canvas, uh, a framework, uh, how to structure the uh, sales uh, presentation or the, the, the process of uh, con converting a, a, a desire into uh, conviction and purchase. So that's where we will uh, end this session. Thank you.